Hello everyone, I'm making this video to talk about Darksiders 3. I'll go over the gameplay and the story of this game, and I'll tell you what I did and didn't like about it. I suppose we'll start with the negatives. First I want to mention the fact that I played this game on PC and experienced a couple of annoying issues that may or may not occur on consoles. The worst by far were the crashes. The game crashed about once every two or three hours on average. I remember how surprised I was when it crashed for the first time because I've gotten so used to games not crashing. In fact, I can't remember when was the last time when a game I played crashed before Darksiders 3. It certainly wasn't recently. Could be driver related or somehow caused by my recording software, I don't know, but it's worth mentioning. The second issue is that the autosaves before at least two of the bosses were bugged. So here's how it works. If you die on a boss fight, you respawn just outside the boss room so you can attempt the fight once more. However, in these cases, I would respawn at the nearest um, spirit healer, whatever the guy was called, who eats souls and all that. Now, the reason why I'm certain this isn't working as intended is because if I were to Alt F4 during the cutscene that plays right before those particular boss fights, I would then correctly spawn just outside of the boss room when I relaunch the game. But once I started the fight, for some reason I had to go all the way back and fight my way through all the enemies. And speaking of that, this brings me to my next issue, which isn't PC exclusive, at least I'm pretty sure it isn't, and that is that every time you die, all enemies respawn. Often this would mean you have to spend 10, 15, maybe even more minutes fighting through the same exact enemies just to go back to where you were before you died. This was, for me at least, very discouraging in terms of playing on higher difficulties. Probably halfway through the game, or even sooner, I started switching to the easiest mode when I die and attempt to just run past all the enemies until I'm back where I was before, and then I would switch back to the higher difficulty I was playing on. Now, I'm not sure what the reasoning behind this respawn is, perhaps to allow players to grind some more XP. If so, I suppose they could have taken a middle ground on the issue and made it so that mobs do not respawn every time you die, but instead only when you exit the game or maybe just exit to the main menu. That way people would have had a choice in the matter. This may not be an issue for you, maybe I'm just not as hardcore as you guys, but for me it felt unnecessary. Um, and I guess I'm done with the negative bits as far as gameplay is concerned. I've heard people raising complaints about fighting many enemies at the same time, and I do agree that it is tedious at times because of how uncomfortable it is to dodge attacks from enemies that are not in front of you, uh, but this is especially the case if you're locking on your current target. Ultimately, I can't say this was an issue for me, because I simply didn't use the lock on target function. I mean, I basically never used it here in this game. And to me at least, with an unlocked camera, it wasn't that difficult to handle enemies from all sides. And speaking of difficulties, uh, I suppose it's worth mentioning that the game is generally not easy. That is of course subjective, and I didn't have a problem with that, but if you're someone who just wants to casually go through the story, it may be difficult to do so. Even on the easiest difficulty, you can't just run headfirst into a group of enemies and crush them. They'll simply kill you unless you dodge, even on story mode. Once again, I'm not listing that as a negative, uh, but rather something to consider. Okay, now let's look at the positive aspects of gameplay, and there were many. I'll mention my preferred playstyle once again, namely not using the lock on target mechanic, and I love how it works in this game. There is a very intuitive and precise connection between your camera movement and the choice of targets, meaning it's easy to guess which enemy you're about to attack, if, for example, you're surrounded or just faced with many enemies in front of you. After playing for a while, I learned how to do it very quickly and with little effort. To compare this to a game I love, The Witcher 3, I've played that for like a million hours, and still I have issues when faced with a situation similar to what I described before, you know, where you're surrounded by a bunch of enemies and you're trying to hit a particular one without the lock-on function. It gets tricky sometimes. 
What else did I like? Um, I thought the pacing of the combat was good as well. I guess that's up to personal preference, but to me it was just right, not too slow and not too fast. Um, there was a good variety of enemies that were not simply different in terms of how much health they had or how much damage they do, but also their attack patterns were different, so studying them and learning how to dodge everything perfectly as my daughter enters the room. Um, ah, it's the weekend after all. She wanted to say stay tuned and be good. Right, so what was I talking about? Um, the... Oh yes, the, the uh, different enemies and how they attack. Um, so it was a fun experience learning how every enemy behaves, to learn how to dodge everything properly. I like that. Should I talk about the puzzles? Well, I don't think I have much to say about them, other than they weren't terribly annoying, which is good. I don't like annoying puzzles. Some were a little difficult to figure out, but there are plenty of guides out there, so if you need any help, just look it up and you'll be fine. And finally, in terms of gameplay, Let's talk about the hollows. I use them all, some less than others, but still, I would find usage for all of them. The fire one, I think I almost never used in combat, but it was the most useful one for traveling around. Of the others, I mostly used the lightning one, but I did switch to the purple and the frost ones as well, mainly when I needed their ultimate abilities, or whatever that was called when you fill up the bar and you know what I'm talking about. And I suppose I'll mention another small negative, Though that may be exclusive to a mouse plus keyboard setup, which is how I played the game, um, I found the usage of the ranged weapon a little clunky in terms of the controls. There were so many times when I would go into aim mode and try to fire with the left mouse button instead of the specific key that was assigned to that. But ultimately that was a minor thing. Okay, I think I can finally talk about the story now. And to be honest, I don't have much to say. It wasn't anything special. What carried it, in my opinion, was Fury. She's awesome. I love the way she looks, I love the way she sounds, though there were a couple of voice acting hiccups. Generally, her voice, looks, and personality are a great match. I'm not sure whether I buy her character growth, in quotes, you know, growing to care about humans, eventually discovering her true purpose and all that. It wasn't terrible, but I kind of preferred her initial, more cynical personality. So other than Fury and her glorious hair, I didn't much care about the rest. I suppose the Envy twist was fine. Um, there were several hints about it through the game. My favorite one was during the fight with Lust. I guess I shouldn't go into detail about it since... since my phone is ringing. Ah, damn it, I had ordered a toy for my daughter online like a week ago, and only now do they call me that it's out of stock. Oh, so anyway, um, going back to the story, I enjoyed the small banters between Fury and the Watcher, which happened all throughout the gameplay sections. Um, the choice you get to make towards the end is also appreciated. I suppose I would have preferred the ability to make even more choices, seeing as they had implemented the choice mechanic already, but oh well, I guess I'm asking for too much. So I think that was it. Those were my thoughts. A little messy, but I hope you don't mind. Uh, I don't really rate games. I'd say this one was average, perhaps above average, especially if you're not playing on PC. I would hesitate to recommend it, especially for the full $60 price, but should it go on sale, I think you gotta give it a try. And that was it. Let me know what you thought about the game in the comments below. Feel free to drop a like if you enjoyed this video, and perhaps check some of my other videos that are being suggested to you right now. Thank you very much for watching, and until the next one, stay tuned and be good.